we are finally going to do this. This crokinole shot is like the grand slam in baseball. You're a hard hit into right. Back at the wall. Tie game. This crokinole shot is like the Scott Stevens body check. This crokinole shot is like the field ace in disc golf. The first time you see a follow through 20 shot in person really is something special. If you enjoy a good crokinole background story, then stick around till the end. But right now, I wanna jump in and share the three progressions that are going to help you move toward mastering the follow through 20. Here's what I would like to say. When you apply these skills, you will be the next Justin Slater of crokinole. Your follow through skills will be feared and revered throughout the NCA and around the world. I'd love to tell you that, but the truth is follow through 20s are tough. They're a very, very challenging shot. Now I don't say that to discourage you, I say that so you'll be that much more satisfied with yourself when you start to drop these. It just feels good. And before I forget, Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards. If you find this helpful and enjoyable, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I think the only thing tougher in Crokinole than learning to be successful with a follow through 20 is figuring out how to explain the follow through 20. That's why it's taken us so long to get around to doing this. So here's what I see happening. You're going to watch these three progressions and then you're going to go apply them and then you will comment down below what did you find helpful and what do you still have some gray, some uncertainty about? Because the way we went about this was I sat down with our video guy, Mackenzie, and he would be considered to be a beginner to intermediate player. He's got some decent skills, he can drop some 20s. He's got the basics of crokinole down. So him and I sat down and we got some video footage of me trying to help him work toward accomplishing that follow through 20. And we broke it down to three drills that should help you progress and move forward and harness the skill for yourself. So the first thing you should do when you sit down at the board is get yourself warmed up, especially if you haven't played for a while, knock some rust off, just shoot some open 20s, maybe some easy touch 20s, just get yourself into flicking mode. And if you're new to the game and still learning your own flicking style, then consider going back to watch or re-watch our video, How to Flick Your Disc, and even the one about how to not hurt your finger while you're flicking your disc, because you're going to want to have your flicking style pretty much sorted out before you jump into these follow through 20s. So once you're warmed up, here is step one, progression number one that I had Mackenzie try. And this is, you'd set the board up with what we would call a heavy hanger. So you take an opponent's button, put it on the far side, and not just a, a super easy hanger, you can do that to warm up, but with, with progression one, give yourself a very heavy hanger. What you'll find when you do this is obviously because it's hanging over more, you need to still hit it straight, but you also need to hit it quite hard. And it, although it's not really classified as a follow through 20, the truth is you do it does require a little bit of follow through in order for you to drop that 20. So what you can do is start with a fairly light hanger and as you get better, just move it in further and further. So you need to hit harder and harder in order to get your 20. Now, once you have a pretty good handle on that, then I'd encourage you to move on to progression number two. And there's a, there's a couple things involved with this one. So the first thing I'd have you do is take an opponent's button and set it, like let's completely forget about the 20 right now and let's just focus on the actual follow through, getting your disc to strike the opponent's button and then continue on. If you do it out to the side, all we're doing is again, focusing on that follow through. So that's what I have McKenzie do and just work on the skill of hitting fairly square and strong enough that it's going to go forward. Now you're probably gonna lose some discs in the gutter as you do this, that's fine, it's all part of the learning curve. Now I'll tell you, one of the tips that I picked up along the way was from our friend Andrew Hutchinson, AKA Hutch Daddy, and when he said a pointer someone shared with him was to, to try to not hit completely dead center because if you do, that will, cause, that will lead you more toward a hit and stick. So you may wanna try being just a tiny, tiny degree off of of dead center, that will allow you to not lose your shooter completely because if you're too far off center, it's gone. But if you're just that little bit off center, it will allow the momentum to continue forward. So you're working on that follow through skill out here. And then the other part of step number two is I would bring it in and have your opponent's button sitting right beside 
the center hole. Because again, you're gonna need to be a little bit off center. Now you may look at this and say, oh Jeremy, if I was playing that shot, I'd just shoot up this side to drop a 20. I want you to forget about that right now and force yourself to try, I would call this a slight follow through. Because there's not a huge distance here, but your button does need to follow through and drop to the side. So practice that skill and I'd encourage you to keep putting that button in the same place. This will allow you to try it, tweak, adjust, maybe a little more power, a little different, a little more power, a little less power, a little different angle until you get really honed in on this. So again, that, that progression number two is that you're working on follow throughs out to the side as well as working on a follow through to the side of that center hole. And it's just getting you used to a bit of follow through action rather than jumping right in to a big powerful follow through. So once you're seeing a bit of success with that, step number three, progression number three, take that opponent's button and put it just on your side of the center hole. Again, for practicing and getting used to the feel of this, I would encourage you to always have that button in the same place or at least very close. That way, if it's a little too much power, then you know you need to back off. Again, it's gonna allow you to adjust. As you get better at this, yes, you're going to wanna try it different distances away, different angles, but again, for now, just set it in that exact same place and keep trying to get those follow-throughs. Now, if you're like most people, as you work on follow through 20s, you're probably going to have some frustrations. This is where I would encourage you to move back in these progressions. If you get frustrated with this, then go back and work on step two. If even this is frustrating, then I encourage you to go back to step number one and work on those heavy hangers, even make them lighter until you get the feel of those dropping into the center. So not to pick on Mackenzie, but I'm, I'm going to pick on Mackenzie. As as I was sitting working with him and saying, you know, pointing out tweaks and adjustments, there was a couple of things that I noticed uh, mistakes, like some some things he started to fall back into. One was something you see so often with new players. He wasn't he got away from being up nice and close to the disc, and it became more of a strike. So a little bit of a reminder. Oh no, you want to be up closer and a little bit more of a push, a little more of a push, a heavy heavy shot. Um, the other thing that I saw was he was, you know, we were sitting here for a while, and then it was just a place bang and shoot right away and I'm like all right just take an extra second and you know you'll make fun of me for being spiritual or esoteric but just kind of visualize your shot what do you want to see happen here just take an extra second or two to see that happening before you go ahead and flick that disc so that's what uh, that's what I was able to see with working with him and I'm super curious to see what questions you come back with after you've tried this the other thing that I'd, I really hope we see in the comment section down below is there I mean there's there's tons of amazing Crokinole players out there. So if you're someone who has even a little bit of success with follow through 20s, what wisdom do you have to share? What's that one little nuance pointer that someone shared with you or something you learned on your own that might help other people work forward in their progression of being able to master this awesome, incredible, fun shot? Now earlier I said there was going to be story time. Now this is the story of the very first time I saw a follow through 20 in person. Now I had, uh, I've played Crokinole my whole life but I spent a lot of years playing on subpar boards because I didn't know better. But it was uh, a number of years ago, Elaine and the boys went out and they got me a Willard Crokinole board. If you don't know, Willard is the gentleman who trained me. Uh, his boards were considered the best in the world and so honored to have learned from him. But anyway, the, they present me with this for Christmas. Christmas, I get this brand new Willard board and I'm so excited and uh, at the time my new friend Roy Campbell who I met through hockey very skilled Crokinole player so he came over to play on my brand new Willard board and we're like a round or two into the game and my button was sitting well on his side of the center hole well Roy Campbell did what Roy Campbell does and he went for the gutsy crazy shot drains an amazing follow-through 20 there was a thud of my chin hitting the table and I said holy crap dude did you do that on purpose and that's when he said oh yeah yeah I mean that's a that's a follow through 20 and instantly I was hooked I'm like dude I have that was so awesome loved it gotta learn teach me how do you do this so Roy in his infinite wisdom he says to me well it's more of a push than a flick I'm like okay but but how do, how do you do it 
And he goes, well, I mean, just think of it like it's a heavy, like it's just, you just take a heavier shot. And I'm like, come on, dude. Like, you've gotta be able to explain this better than that. I wasn't quite that rude to him, but that's kind of how the conversation went. Anyway, very persistent. I worked on this 100 different ways. And eventually I got to a place that pretty decent at follow through 20s. So a few months later, Roy and I are at a, a club in Waterloo and I drain a follow through 20. And Roy and I are at the same table, just happen to be at the same table for this match. So somebody else at the table says, Jeremy, how do you do that? I'm trying to learn how to do the follow through 20s. And I'm like, well, you know, it's more of a push. It's more of a push than a flick. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but, but how do you do it? And I'm like, well, well, just think of it as a heavy shot. And I look over and there's Roy just grinning at me because at that point I understood this is again one of those things that can be learned but is somewhat difficult to teach. And that's why we put this off for so long is because I'm not really 100% sure how to explain this. So I'm hoping for your help with this throw your comments, your questions, anything that you have to share and help other people learn how to make the greatest shot on earth for the greatest game on earth. So in recap, just uh, your, your progressions, once you're warmed up, you work on your heavy hanger 20s, then you work on just follow throughs out to the side or just up the side, and then slowly start pulling it back and making, the, making shots that require more follow through action in order for you to be successful. And the most important thing to to remember is that you should always follow through on the idea of sitting down to play the greatest game on earth. What? Yeah. By these three progressions, you will. You're fall. Wow. Wow, just give me a second. Nice. Ding. Yeah, great follow through all the way.